Hello, welcome back to my channel. Again, this is Jobrin, yours truly, and welcome to The Free Mind. And today is, I will be explaining another subject, um, the subject of gender and sexuality. But before I will do that, um, I would like to say thank you so much for subscribing and for sending your likes and comments to my channel. And to those who are new to my channel, my channel discusses a lot of learning videos, educational learning videos. So I hope this topic would uh, help you understand a little bit more about gender and sexuality. So I know it's been one month ago since I posted my latest video and um, now I'm back to post another subject to help you learn a lot through this e-learning video. So let's talk about gender and sexuality. So sex and gender, these are two very important topics that we are going to talk about, yet very complicated. The sex in the biological sense, it is purely related to reproduction function. And for most living creatures, there are two sexes, the male and the female. So when you talk about the female, female is determined by the, it produces egg cell, while the male, they produces sperm cell. And they are also, if you are familiar with the XX equates to female and the XY equates to male. So when you talk about sex, Hormones. Hormones also play part in how we define sex. Definition of the, if you are a male, you have your masculinity. So again, hormones also play a bigger part in the definition of one's sex. So how you define sex, it influences by one's culture. So when one see you as a person, they don't see the XX or the XY, but they only see the male or the female. But now, since we are now living in a more accepting society, so now we have the LGBTQ+, QYA+. So, this is where the gender comes in. So, in short, sex is unchangeable. It is biological givenness. While your gender, this is uh, your societal preference and it is changing over time. So gender is a socially learned behavior usually associated with one's sex. So gender is associated with one's sex. So gender is also based on how people see themselves. So gender is based on how people see themselves and on their tendency to act along with their masculinity or femininity. For example, I am a female, so I act my femininity. So that's why my sex as female and I act on my femininity. That's why you can see me as a female. So gender, again, sex and gender are two different things. But one's gender is usually associated with one's sex. So my gender is usually associated with one's, with my own sex. So sex is physiological. It is related to reproduction, while gender is social, cultural, and learned behavior, it changes over time and it varies among culture, within culture or among other culture. So these two are two different things. So the question is, does sex correspond to gender? So many scientists, psychologists, and sociologists believe that sex does not determine one's gender. So the whole idea of being a woman, therefore, is based on gender and society's belief in how a woman should act. For example, if I am a female, so the society is telling me that I should act like a, like a female, feminine. So since sex doesn't determine gender, but as they say, gender is associated with your sex. So it may. So doing household chores are said to be a woman's job. So for example, doing household chores are said to be a woman's job. Yet, there are some men who do the cooking and cleaning at home. So aggressive sports are said to be more for men. But for every men's sports team, there is a counterpart for women. So in this type of scenarios, gender role socialization comes in. 
Therefore, if I am a female, I can also do something that men can do. So, I love to watch bas basketball. I love to watch basketball. I love to watch boxing. So, meaning, I also love some things for men, even if I am biologically female. That's why the many scientists believe, psychologists and sociologists believe that your sex does not determine one's gender. But gender now is usually associated with sex. Okay? So, that's why there's a lot of confusion about this. The gender role socialization comes in. The gender role socialization is defined as the process of learning and internalizing culturally approved ways of thinking, feeling, and behaving. So in short, um, gender role socialization, this is, this is how you think, feel, and behave, and how you process all the things that you learned. So socialization affects all parts of one's identity by dictating what is acceptable to do because of uh, gender socialization comes in. So once socialization regulates his or her perception of genders in two ways. So we have external regula regulation and internalized self-control. So each society has social norms, correct? That have been developed over time due to the values belief that is holds. So external regulation involves various institution dictating what is proper and normal based on one's identity so for female for example uh, men do not do not usually cry they don't cry but for female it is natural for us to cry but again there are males who also cry when they get hurt so let's all be careful with the emotional aspect of men because they also know how to cry so it doesn't mean you are a male, you are not allowed to cry. And it doesn't mean you are a female, you are not allowed to do things like, like men can do. So that's the role of gender role socialization. So there are two ways in how we can um, differentiate uh, gender. So we have the external regulation and internalized self-control. So external regulation involves various institution external regulation meaning people are are people are trying to dictate on what is proper and normal for you to do since you are a male or a female it affects how one sees his his or her gender and that gender in relation to other gender so that's the time that we are dictate dictated by others that is external regulation so because of this external regulations enforced by society, notions of gender are absorbed and internalized social control is formed. Because people are dictating us on what to do and what is the right thing to do. So that's the time that social, internalized social control comes in. So what is internalized social control? So internalized social control uh, causes a person to police himself or herself according to society's standards or norms. So we try to guard ourselves, to guard ourselves according to what is the society's standards and norms that we need to do. Consistent practice will eventually affect all aspects of his or her personality. So when we are dictated by others, the external regulation. So we cannot do what really what we really wanted to do. So that's why internalized social control comes in. So it affects us. It affects how we see ourselves. It affects how we value ourselves. So in turn, resulting in the resulting in the uh, policing of others, expanding and perpetuating this regulation. Similarly, if someone finds himself or herself deviating from what society finds normal. He or she may become deviant and excluded from society. So since people are dictating us, since people are controlling us, guarding us, and telling us what is the right thing to do, um, someone finds himself or herself um, very different from others and considers himself as very deviant. 
and not part of the society. So that's that's how they feel. So now we are experiencing gender stereotypes. So gender stereotypes develop when different institutions reinforce a biased perception of a certain gender's ro gender rule. So this belief can be limiting if seen as prescriptive of a gender's role rather than descriptive of many possible roles one can have. So what is gender stereotype? Meaning if you are a female, you are not allowed to do this because you are a female. If you are male, you are only allowed to do this because you are a male. So that is gender stereotype. Meaning um, way back in time, uh, women are not allowed to work. We just stay in the house to clean the house, to take care of the kids. While in today's generation, the husband and the wife are both working. So, meaning, they are bo both working, helping each other for the family, not totally staying in the house. They also take care of the kids, but they both are working. Because we are talking about gender, so gender stereotypes is uh, trying to have some biased perception of what women can do, what men can do because of that gender stereotypes. So gender stereotypes are of four types. We have the sex stereotypes. These are generalized view of traits that should be possessed by men and women. So physically and emotional roles. So meaning sex stereotypes is something that if you are a female, you should possess this physical and emotional roles. Meaning if you are a female, it's okay to cry. If you are a male, you are not allowed to cry. If you are a male, you should be um, strong. If you are a female, you should be very emotional. So that is our sex stereotypes. We, but there are females who are also strong. There are males who also learn to cry. So that's gender stereotypes, the sex stereotypes. Number two is sexual stereotypes involves assumption regarding a person's sexuality that reinforce dominant views for example the assumption that all people are only attracted to the sex opposite so that is our sexual stereotypes that we assume that um people are only attracted to their opposite sex but that is not the case all the time the number three is the sex role stereotypes encompasses the rules that men and women are assigned based on their sex and what behaviors they must possess to fulfill these rules so the sex role stereotype means that if you are the the father you should be the breadwinner of the family and the man should take care of the kids so that is based on the sex role stereotypes you are not allowed to work you just stay in the house to take care of the kids that's the sex role stereotypes and today's generation it is not the same as before so we are now living in a leveling off of gender and sexuality the number four is the comp compounded stereotypes are assumptions about a specific group belonging to a gender for example uh compounded stereotypes are young women old men single men or women so like me i am uh, not so young and not not yet so old so i am in the middle life starts begins at 40 so something like that so compounded stereotypes that i am uh, older i am i am older okay so are you familiar with the soji right the abbreviation of soji stands for sexual orientation and gender identity and expression so sexuality is different from sex. Sexuality is the expression of a person's thoughts, feelings, social or sexual orientation and relationship, as well as the biology of the sexual response system of the person. So sexuality is how you express yourselves, how you express your feelings, how you express your sexual orientation and your relationship with others. So the different terms standing for soji are further defined below. Sexual orientation covers the three dimension of sexuality, namely sexual attraction, emotional preference, heterosexual or homosexual lifestyle, 
Sexual orientation involves a person to whom one is attracted to and how one identifies himself or herself in relation to this attraction. So in my case, I am more attracted to my opposite sex. I am married, so I have my own family. That's my sexual orientation. Okay, so I am, um, that's my sexual attraction. So number two is gender identity refers to one's personal experience of gender or social relations. And that means how one sees himself or herself in relation to gender and sexuality. A person could identify himself or herself as masculine or feminine. So if you identify yourself as feminine, that is your gender identity. If you identify yourself as masculine, that is your gender identity. So gender expression, the third one, gender expression. Gender expression determine how one expresses his or her sexuality through the actions or manner of presenting oneself. So gender expression means how you express your sexuality through your actions or manners or presenting yourself. That is your gender expression. Okay, so that's why we have the term soji to try to to understand the idea of our sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression. So that's the importance of our sexuality, uh, gender, how we identify. People, now, people nowadays, we are always trying to, to be true of ourselves. We're always trying to be um to be part of the society and let's try to be more open to this idea uh trying to accept the different roles that we are into trying to be more open what they believed in they also have their sexual orientation gender identity uh gender expression so that's how they express themselves that's how they see themselves their sexuality their expression of, a, of their own thoughts, of feelings, and their relationship with others. Which I think this is our right, the right to expression. And as long as we know who we are, as long as we are, um, we are still doing good about ourselves, still accepting ourselves of who we are, I think we are still in a good track and gender and sexuality uh, as we all know that this is very important to talk about how we express ourselves and yet these two are very complicated to to discuss but i hope you will you get something out of out of this very quick discussion i hope you are learning from this video i hope you learn about the importance of understanding the soji our gender roles st stereotypes our sexuality our sex and our gender so i hope you get something out of this thank you so much and god bless you